What's up everybody, my name's Tyler Potts and in today's video we're going to be creating a React login form. Now, it, well, it's just a React form. We're going to be looking into how you handle data using uh, React hooks via a form. So we're going to be using use state and we're going to be passing uh, props down from different components. So that's what we're going to look at today. Uh, and for example, we'll just go look at this. So if we just say my name's Tyler Potts, we go into our email and the email has to be admin.admin.com. And the password is admin123. So if we go through and we click login, as you can see it logs in. Now if we log back out and we give in some false information and we just say test and we click login, you can see details do not match. Now we're doing this all locally on our React app. Now normally you'd want to have a server with a database that actually handles all this um, checking of the user and the data. But in this tutorial, we're just looking at how you actually handle a form. So Without further ado, let's stop this server and let's create a new React app. So what we're going to do is cd out the current directory. We're going to run um, npx. So if you don't have Node or NPM installed, you're going to need to install it. Uh, go install Node. Uh, you can go to nodejs.org. Um, and you could easily find a tutorial on the internet to do this and then come back to this video once you've done that. So what we're doing is npx create react app and then we're going to give it a name we'll just say react login hit enter and that is going to obviously create our react app so i will see you once this app has uh rendered okay guys so the it's now um built the project or uh built the base project for us um i'm just going to cd into the react login script and we're going to run yarn start but before i do that i'm going to open it up in my text editor which is vs code uh, and then I'm going to run yarn start. Now that's going to start our surfer, our development surfer, and we can see that over here. So let's drag this up into here, close that, and there we go. So now we don't need half these files. We're going to remove app.css. We're going to do everything in index.css. I don't see why there's two. For me personally, I prefer keeping everything in one place or using SAS and splitting it up that way. Um, I'm going to remove that and set up tests, and there you go. So we remove the logo, the app.css, and the tests. Um, we're going to remove everything from inside this file as well. We're going to go over into index and delete everything from in there. And that is everything. So we don't need to mess with any of this or any of that. So we're inside our app. Now, what we need to do is, well, one, as you can see, the local server has started. So you can see it here and you go over here and you can see that has now started. So what we're going to start with doing is we're going to get use state from React. So we get use state. Uh, we also need to get our, we're going to set up some admin details here. So we're just going to say admin user. And this is where we're going to store our admin, um, the, the thing we're going to check our login details against. So normally this will be in a database and on another surfer and in all secure. But in our case, we're just testing. We're just, we're just making a quick uh, form. And that's what we're going to do. So we're going to say admin123. Hit save and there you go. So we've got admin user saved. We're going to remove the Well, we're going to create our files first. So I just want to go here. We're going to create a components folder and a file inside it called loginform.js. And there you go. I just want to create that, open that. And now we've got all the files we need. We won't need any more from those. So let's go back to app.js. Um, and let's go down to const. So we're going to say const. And we're going to get obviously an array back from our um, set state function. So we're going to say set user. So this is going to be where we get our user data. So once we've logged in, this data is going to be set. Uh, we're going to get a name. Um, we're going to get an email address. And that's all we're going to get to actually save inside of our user. For now, obviously, you'd probably have a lot more. Um, you'd have a token and stuff like that for login. Or fend and fend yeah, yeah, I can't even say the word. You know what I mean. Uh, it's error and set error. Uh, we're gonna say use state, and this one is just gonna be a string, because um, what the error is gonna do is gonna catch if word our details aren't actually correct, and it's just gonna have a message in there to display. Um, we're then gonna create a function, and we're gonna call this function login. So this is the function that's going to be called when we're trying to attempt to log in. So we're gonna pass through details to this actual login uh, method. And we're just going to console.log details for now. In the future, we'll be setting our user or setting our error. But for now, we're just going to do that. We also need to actually create a logout. 
Uh, and we're just going to go const log out and we're going to set this equal to uh, for now console.log log out and that's all we're going to do for this part of uh, well this bit we now need to actually get some markup and display it on screen so we've got our app uh, if we just say hello here and I hit save you'll see it updates here and it says hello now what we want to do is we want to actually do a check. We're going to run a ternary operator by using the JSX um, JavaScript integration here. And we're just going to say user.email. And we're going to say it's not equal to null. So up here, if this user email is not equal to nothing, we will then render. We're going to render a uh, welcome screen. So I'm just going to say welcome. And what we're just going to put is h2. Just going to say welcome. We're going to have a span, and what the span will have is our user dot name. So it's going to just pull pull through our name. We're then going to have a button which says log out, and we'll style that up later. Uh, we're then going to say so if we're not logged in, we're going to display our login form. So we're just going to say login form, save, and if we go into our login form, we're just going to say imp or we're going to use RFCE enter. Now that's going to create this boilerplate and if you want to be able to do the same and you don't know how to, if you go over to extensions and go down to here you can see I have an extension called es and React Redux GraphQL React Native Snippets and that allows me to quickly create a uh, React functional component. Uh, so let's go back here, we don't need it actually. Um, we're going to remove this and we're going to swap this out for a form. Uh, we don't need any method. We then need a form inner for styling later on. A H2 which says login or just login. Uh, we're going to add in our error here. So we're going to say error. That's where our error is going to go. And then we need some form groups. And this is just for styling. Our first form group will have a label which is for the name. And this is just going to say name. We're then going to have an input of type text. Um, and this will just be name name as we said before. Oh, no space there. Uh, and then we need another form group, if I can type. Um, and inside here, we obviously need a label, which is going to be for the email address. Uh, and we're just going to say email, not email. Email, input, type email, not text, email. And it's just going to say email, email. There you go. We're then going to create one last group, form group. And we're just going to say label. This one's going to be our password. So we'll just say password. And then after this, we're just going to do a last input of type password, obviously password, password, save. And if we go back over here, login form is not defined. Now, the reason for that is because we actually need to import in our main app. So what we're going to do is say import login form from. Now we're going to use a relative path. So from components and login form. We don't need the .js at the end because uh, I think it's Webpack that knows how to do that. And there you go. So now we see our login form. We actually need a submit button. So after our last input or our last form group, we're going to create a submit with the value of login. Hit save. And there we go. We've now got our login button. So if we go back here, we can see we've got login. Now we actually need to pass through the login function to this because we're going to need to be able to call it from inside our form once we submit. So what we're going to say here is login. We're then going to need to actually pass through the error as well. So if we just say error is equal to, and then we'll just go pass through the error, um, which will obviously, if there is an error, we'll display an error. If there isn't, we won't. Uh, so let's go back to our login form and we're just going to destructure this. Um, so this would pass through obviously props, which would be an object. We're just going to destructure it and uh, get the props straight away. So we're going to get the login and the error. And that's what we're doing here. Perfect. So now we've got that, we actually want to create a, we, need, we want to import uh, or get use state from React again. And under here, we actually want to give const and this will be our local details, which um, are going to be our details for our form. So we're just going to go here and say new state. And I'm just going to say name. And we're going to say email. And obviously we need a password as well. Um, so go here and we're just going to say password. Oh, that's a bar. That's not uh, blank. And there we go. So we've got that. That's good. 
Now we also need a function in here or a method and we're going to call this submit handler. And this is just going to obviously handle our submit. And what we're going to do is we're going to prevent defaults. We don't want the page to re-render or anything like that. And then we're just going to call the login function we've passed through as a prop and just pass through the details. And there you go. So that's going to pass through the details. So if we actually go onto our form, we could say on submit is equal to, um, and we called it submit handler. And that will call the submit submit handler function. So now what we need to do, once we've once we call that, well, let's try it out. Let's show, show what it does. So if we go back to here and let's open up our terminal and we click login, you can see it's just console login empty stuff. And that's all we've asked it to do. We're just asking it to console log the details. So if we was to write here, test, test, test and click login. Oh, test at test.com.co. Login. You can see it's still blank. And the reason for that is because detail we're not actually updating our details uh, we've created here. Now, to do that, we need to bind input to each one of these values in here. So the name. So what we need to do here is we just got to go on change. So anytime a keystroke is in here, so when we change anything, we're just going to say... Um, we're going to pass through the event, so E, and then we'll say set details, right? And that's going to call that function. So now we need to grab that. We're going to pass through an object and we're going to do dot, 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 details. So we're going to get the same details, but we're only going to update the name. And we're going to do the name to E.target.value. We then need to set the value equal to details.name. So what's happened here is we've got this. Anytime we change it, we're calling a function and we're passing through the event. The event holds the target value. Um, and all we're doing is we're updating the set details and we're passing through uh, the new value for name. And that should now update name. So if we go back and we type in here, Tyler, and we click login, you can see it's passed through name, Tyler, password, nothing, email, nothing. So now we're getting that through. So now we just need to do the same thing three times. So we're going to copy this, go down to our email, paste it here. Details, this one will now be email, and over here will also be email. There you go, that's that done. So for password, we need to change this from name to password, and the details to password. Hit save, go back, and now whatever we type in here, test, test at test.com, and test. Click login, you can see it's all in there. Now we're passing it through, which is perfect. But now we need to actually handle the actual form. So we need to go back into our app and go down to our login here. So underneath the console log, we'll keep that in there for now. We're going to say if details.email is equal to admin user.email and the details.password is equal to the admin user.password. Then we're logged in. We're just going to say console.log logged in. Else. So if it comes back, for, oh my god, I can't type else. Um, we're console.log details do not match. Um, and that's that. So let's go back here and let's type in something wrong. Test, test at test.co and test login. Details do not match, but if we get it right, so we can put any name, remember, it doesn't matter what name we put, we're not actually comparing these. But the email address, we can say, so admin at admin.com, and the password is admin, click login. Details do not match, did I name that right? One sec. Admin at admin.com, admin, admin123. Admin My bad, it's admin123, I missed a 123. Click login, and there you go, now we're logged in. So we actually need to log in. So to do that, we're just going to say set user and we're going to pass through a new array and we'll call it a name. It's going to be details.name and the oh, email, should I say, is going to be details. No, not that type of details. Details. Dot, and you guessed it, email. Cool. So that is that done. So once we've actually passed those through, we can now go back 
and we can put in our name which doesn't really matter our email address which does matter and our password which is admin123 click login and you can see we'll take him to the welcome screen party for our name but the log out button the so log out button basically all we need to do here is go set user and we just got to sell it back to its default value so we're literally just going to grab these and i just remove that and hit enter and it's messing up there we go and hit save so now that has now done so that will just set our user and log us out uh, and to call that we need to go on our button say on click we'll go set to log out so that should log us out. So if we go back in here, oh, it's saying it's a day of breach. Don't worry, it's because we're changing stuff. So let's go put our name, our email address, which is admin at admin.com, and then admin123. Click login. And now if we log out, it logs us back out. Perfect. So there you go. You can now see us logging in and out with the form. Now, it's all good and dandy. It looks, you know, fine. But we don't have any errors to start with. So our name, Tyler Potts. Our email address, admin at admin.com. Our password, admin123. But let's say we get that wrong. We'll just go put test, login. Details do not match. It says it in the console, but no one has a console. We need to actually see it appear here. So if we go to our login form, we actually now need to display the error we're passing. So what we're going to do is we'll just literally go do another ternary operator. Oh, sorry, I've just clicked the wrong. And we're back. We're back. I'm sorry about that. We're back. So what we're going to do here is go from error. We're just going to say, we're going to check for an error. We're going to say, if error is not equal to nothing, then we're going to pass through a diff with the class, or we'll just do this. We're going to say dot error. And it doesn't want to work because it hates me. Dot error. Just, you know what, diff class name <laughs> equal error. There you go. Nailed it first time, every time. Um, and then after here, we just need to do that and then pass through an empty string. Because if, if we don't have an error, then we don't display anything. And what we're going to do is if we have an error, we're just going to say error. Well, we're just going to pass the error. Save. And now if we go back and we actually get an error, if we click login, details do not match. Nothing happened. Uh, that is because we are not setting our error. We're not setting our error. So we need to actually set our error. So we're just going to say set error. And we're just going to pass through literally what we have here. Copy. Oh, don't miss. Save. There we go. Now let's hit this. And if we just hit login, it just says details do not match. Because we haven't put anything in there. Now let's put in Tyler email admin at admin.com and admin123 login. And bam, we're logged in. Now for the rest of this um, tutorial, we're going to be doing some CSS. Um, and we're going to go through this quite quickly because it's not necessarily a CSS tutorial, but looking good is always great. So we're just going to add some padding, um, some box sizing of border box, and also a font family of Montserrat and Sans Serif. We're then going to get the input and the button, and we're just going to set the appearance to none. Uh, the background to none, the border to none, and the outline to none. Hit save, go back, everything looks absolutely beautiful now. Um, we then need to go down here and just do app. We're going to just basically say height, 100 VH, display flex, excuse me, display flex, uh, align item center, and justify content center. And we're just going to give it a background color of 5, 3, 5, 3, or 5, 5, 3, 5, 6, 5, A. Nice little gray for you. Uh, a form is going to be equal to display block, and it's going to be position relative. So if we save and we go back, everything centered, that's good. Let's remove that. We don't need that. Um, that's good. Um, we now need to actually do a form after to get that nice sort of board gradient border. We're just going to say content. We're going to say display block position absolute top minus five pixels, left minus five pixels, right minus five pixels. Oh, I'm getting dizzy doing this, but minus five pixels. There we go. All good. C index one and a battle. Oh. That's source, not. And a background image of linear gradient to bottom right. And we're just going to pass through 
FFCE00 F E that was weird, how did I do that? F E four A eight zero. Oh, we missed a hashtag. Boom. So that should give us a pink, and if we go back, we can see we've just got a pink box, and it overtakes everything. Now we actually need to see our form, so we actually need to go in here and say form dot or dot inner form, and we're just gonna say position relative display again display block. Come on, stop inlining me. Background color of white, a padding of 30 pixels, and finally um, a C index of two to pull it ahead of the F1. <clears throat> to put it ahead of the other one form inner I named it the wrong way around form inner my bad go back and there you go now it's on top which is perfect and we've got this nice little border going around that's what we wanted that's what we're doing with that styling let's style the h2 so let's copy that paste that h2 go here color a a a font size will be 28 pixels font weight will be 500 and margin bottom will be 30 pixels bam so we've got that done we now need a form dot form inner dot form group oh god a lot of forms uh we'll go display again not inline block um so we're gonna display block we're gonna have a color of 6666 that's a label so we need a width of 300 for this one um we need margin bottom and we'll give it 15 pixels to save um and let's go over here there we go stuff is starting to look a bit more in shape we're gonna go form uh we can just do form even though we don't need to actually keep messing around with form the front form i'm pretty sure we're not using anything we need an actual label and to start a label we're just gonna say we'll pull it a display block to start with we're then going to give it a color of 666. We're going to give it a font size of 12 pixels and a margin bottom of about 5 pixels. And then a transition of 0.4 because we're going to have a slight transition when we hover over it. Now what we're going to do here, or not when we hover over it, when we focus this. So when we go focus within, so that means once the form is, the input is focused inside, we're literally going to set the color to FE4880. Perfect. And now we just need to style the input. So form dot form inner dot form group input. We'll display block. We're then going to give it a width of 100%, although display block does that anyway. It doesn't listen for some reason. We're going to give it a 10 pixels and 15 pixels of padding, a background color of FAFAF8, -A -F -A -F and a border radius of 8 pixels. Oh, and then we're gonna give it a transition because it's gonna have animation. As you know, I always add animation to my things to make it look like you're actually doing things. Uh, and that animation is going to be a focus. So when we actually focus on this, we're gonna add a box shadow of zero pixels, zero pixels, three pixels, RGBA, zero, 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 zero point two. Save, go back, and there you go. We've got our form looking nice. Now we just need to do the button at the bottom. Now we're gonna do some fancy stuff here. So we're just gonna say form, dot form, inner, and then we're just gonna input with the type equal to submit. And what we're gonna do here is just say display inline block inline block uh, padding uh, is going to be 10 pixels 15 pixels it's about right uh, border radius of 8 pixels a background image of a linear gradient and it's going to be too right and we'll get this and we're going to say 50 percent we're then going to do the exact same thing again and say 50 oh, that needs a double zero and then we're actually just going to pass through the fe4880 there at the end which is good so now we've got the background image sorted so if we save we go back it looks kind of weird but we'll fix that in a second we need the background size to be 200 percent we need the background position to be 0 percent we then need the transition to be 0 0.4 seconds as you know it needs transition uh, and then we need the color to be white go back and that's looking good now it doesn't look great I know details do not match don't don't mock me um, 
So yeah, we've got the color in there. We need a font weight of 700 and the cursor of pointer. Um, and then when we actually hover over this button, so we're just gonna copy this. I'm gonna say when we hover it, we're just gonna say background position goes to 100%, 0%. Save, go back, and as you hover, you can see it now slides in from the right. So there you go. We now styled our login form. Now, I was going to style the welcome screen, but I'm not sure it's worth it. Should we just do it? Uh, let's have a look what it looks like when we log in. So we'll just say, my name's Tyler. Email address is uh, admin at admin.com, and the password is admin123. Now, if we log in, you can see it's here. Uh, and if we click the log out button, we log back out. So maybe we can quickly style it. We'll style it anyway. If you want to skip, you can skip. Um, we'll do dot welcome. We're going to give it a width of 100%, uh, a max width of 480 pixels, uh, background color. That's attachment. BGC of white. Perfect. Thank you. And a padding of 15 pixels, 30 pixels. Now the welcome. H2 will have a color of gray, uh, a font size of 28 pixels, a font weight of 500, and a margin bottom of 30 pixels. Now we've got all this, it's it's getting there. Now we just need to get that span. So we're gonna say dot welcome h2 span. We're gonna fit a color, and we're just gonna say FE4800, and the font weight will obviously be 700. Um, and that's good. Now we're actually going to go up to our submit here. We're going to put a comma and we're going to pass through a uh, welcome button. And then we're also going to do the same thing down here. So we're going to do a comma, welcome button, hover. Um, so now if we go back and we log in and our email address is admin at admin.com and our admin is 123. We log in, you can see it's here, and everything is styled up. And that is it for this video, guys. So if you enjoyed it, and if you learned something new, and if it was exciting, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Now, I appreciate you all. You're all awesome. I hope you liked the video, and I will see you guys in the next one. Peace out.